Street, and McDonald's is a lot more powerful than Burger King. They send all their uh, McDonald's police over to Burger King, invade them. Who uh, could intervene to stop that if Burger King can't defend itself, for instance? Well, Burger King is the bad guy here. No, well, oh, McDonald's, McDonald's, Burger McDonald's King opens up across the street, right. McDonald's sends McDonald's, McDonald's is the bad guy. Yeah. Right. I just wanted to make <laughs> well, either way, I, I, I just want to be on the same wavelength. Yeah. <laughs> so McDonald's is the bad guy. <laughs> okay. okay. Burger King had the audacity to open up across the street and McDonald's sent over Hitman. Yeah. Well, that's not the way that the present McDonald's made its money. The present McDonald's made its money not by uh, by competing with Burger King and Wendy's and, and uh, you know pizza places and um, Subway, not by sending out Hitman. The only people that sound like you are these drug gangs. Not sound like you, but sound like yeah. sound like your kind of McDonald's are the drug gangs. But we know from whence the drug gangs spring. Let me try another attack on you. I don't mean personally. Oh, I know. I'm just playing devil's advocate. No, no, no. Devil's advocate is good. Let, let me try again at you. There is such a thing called legitimacy. Now, if the richest 90% of the people gang up and try to rule the poorest 10% of the people, this isn't going to work. <laughs> Can't get blood out of a stone. Yeah. Right? I mean, the poorest 10% of the people don't really have that much that the richest 90% of the people can attack them and get out of them. So that's not the way that totalitarian dictatorships arise. Rather, it's the top 10% of the people, the richest 10% of the people, the most powerful, who say, well, look, you know, or the richest 5% or 1%, and say, let's rip off the poorest 95%. And now that's viable in the sense that it could work, in the sense that the poorest 98% have a lot of wealth. And if the richest 2% can grab it off for themselves, then they're doing well. The problem with that is that if the 98% of the people ever catch on <laughs> as to what's going on, they'll kill or nullify the richest 2% who are trying to rip them off. So what the richest 2% of the people have to have more than anything else is legitimacy, a sense of legitimacy. Now what's legitimacy? Does legitimacy mean that the poorest 98% have to look up, up on them and say they're godlike and whatever they say, you know, will obey? No. They just have to passively acquiesce. They can't get, you know those movies where the, the, the townsfolk would grab pitchforks and firebrands and go get, who was it, the, the, the monster? The king. The king, the monster, who was... If you get the pitchforks and the, the fire, and they're going to the castle to get rid of the king, the king's in trouble. So what the king has to do, and Hans Hoppe is beautiful on this, what the king has to do is get legitimacy. Either the people have to think that the king is God, or godlike, or in touch with God, or that he's legitimate because he was duly elected by a democratic process, and it's constitutional, or something. If he doesn't have legitimacy, it's game over. And the way he gets legitimacy is he suborns what Hayek called the second-hand dealers in ideas, namely journalists, academics, intellectuals, professors, pays them off to support the government. It's just beautiful that the Fed, Ron Paul is trying to get rid of the Fed now. You know who's supporting the Fed? Practically every mainstream macroeconomist. You know why? Because practically every mainstream macroeconomist either worked for the Fed works for the Fed, hopes to work for the Fed, or is subsidized by the Fed in, in some way or other. Namely, the Fed has got legitimacy because it's suborned all the intellectuals. The government tries to suborn all the intellectuals. The only way that McDonald's is going to succeed in, in doing what you said they would do to Burger King is if they have legitimacy. And if that's the way they act, they're not going to get legitimacy. So that's my second attempt at you, to try to dissuade you. You see, what you're thinking is, well, this powerful McDonald's, they need legitimacy. And if the way, and if what they do is go across the street and um, break the windows of, of Burger King, they're not going to do it. 
You know a much better way to do it? There's this little town called Tofino. It's on the northern part of Vancouver Island. And you know what they just did? They have a rule. No McDonald's. No uh, franchise of any sort. And you know who's pushing it? The hippy-dippy uh, uh, entrepreneurs in Tofino. They don't want McDonald's or <coughs> Burger King or Wendy's or anything like that because there'll be fewer people buying. And you know the reason they use is, oh, well, you know, we got to keep the uh, uh, Tofino atmosphere the way it is, which means no franchises. And you know what they use for legitimacy? Democratic vote. Now, if they didn't have that, they would be seen for the scandals that they are. So if McDonald's wants to do this, you know the way they should do it? Just like the butter and the margarine people did, or rather just the way the butter people try to do with the margarine people. Let me give you a little history of butter and margarine. When margarine first came out, it was colored roughly like my shirt is, sort of gray, maybe not as dark, but a light gray, yucky gray. And the margarine people, no one would buy it. I mean, and it was good. It was good margarine, but it looked yucky. So what they did is they colorized it yellow. And guess who, uh, guess which states passed laws against colorizing margarine? Ones where butter is produced. The ones where butter, this man is a wise person. The ones where butter is produced. Sure, Rhode Island didn't do it. No butter produced in Rhode Island or in Arizona. It was, you know, there's, uh, Missouri, Minnesota, Illinois, wherever the cows are. That's where they passed this law. They had legitimacy because they did it through a democratic process. But suppose that the butter people just went and start sh started shooting um, uh, margarine people for colorizing. They'd be, they, it would be game over. They couldn't do it. That's why I say McDonald's couldn't do this to Burger King unless they got legitimacy. The only way to get legitimacy is to start hiring some politicians. You can't buy a politician, you can only rent one. You know, <laughs> that old joke. Get them to ban McDonald's, uh, ban Burger King. In other words, suppose that the Burger King is a little different than McDonald's. Say it's got more salt or less salt. Well, you get a law passed saying that the only legitimate amount of salt in a burger is the McDonald's level. And nobody who's not doing it now can change. That'll get rid of them. 